Hello, I'm Atuba George and I'm so, so excited to be bringing God's truth to you today. I hope you have joy in your heart. Now, if you don't have joy in your heart, hear me, your joy will be restored today by the time you're done with this broadcast. Praise God. Joy is of the Holy Ghost. Joy is of the Holy Ghost, meaning it is a fruit, it is a, a character of the fruit of the Holy Spirit in you. So if you've got the Holy Spirit in you, then joy shouldn't be a difficult thing for you. Praise God. Hey, before we go into today's broadcast, can we call for that daily bread? Why? Because I want your joy to be full. Not just have joy, but let your joy be full. How will my joy be full? When the testimony of the prayer you're about to pray now happens. Thank you, Lord Jesus. So can we pray together? Say this with me. Say, Father, I declare and I receive my daily bread. It's coming to me now in Jesus' name. Amen. Praise God. Oh, thank you, Lord Jesus. Jesus said, ask and you will receive. Why? So that your joy will be full. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Isn't that wonderful to think? Jesus, you know, sometimes people think God is just serious. You know, you want to serve God. You have to keep a straight face. You have to, you know, be serious and just... You don't smile so much in the presence of God. What are you smiling for? An angel can just knock you. Hey, Jesus said he wants us to live our life full of joy. So what did he do? He, he commanded us, ask. And when you ask, what's going to happen next? You will receive. And when you receive, <laughs> your joy will be full. Praise God. Yeah, that's what he said. So why? Why? Don't you ask? James tells us you don't receive because you don't ask. You don't ask. It's an open check. Ask. So I don't know what you want. Now when we pray for our daily bread, I don't, I don't know what comes to your mind. I remember, I think I shared this last Thursday, you know, and you know, I remember that was last week. You know, my children asked, like they, they, they just came to me, like two of them, right? Daddy, we want pizza. I said, You want pizza? Yeah, you two, you want pizza. What about the other ones? He went and came back, said, We all want pizza. I said, You all want pizza. I said, Yes, okay, good. I said, Turn your Bibles to Matthew chapter 18 and verse 18 and 19. And then they opened and read it. And I said, look at 19 again. The red 19. I said, do you understand verse 19? He said, yeah. I said, what do you understand? And they took turns to explain it. At least the two senior ones took turns to explain to me what they understood. And so, what are you going to do as, as regards to your pizza? How does this connect with your pizza? I said, okay. So, if we all agree that we want pizza, we can ask God. And God, our Father in heaven, will give it to us. I said, yeah. So I said, what are you going to do? They said, we'll pray. So they held their hands together and they prayed and they asked God for their pizza. And you know, I made up my mind. I, I just made up my mind. I said, I'm not buying them that pizza until their father answers. Praise <laughs> God. Yeah. So, so I was waiting. I wasn't going to do, you know, it was in the early days. It's, uh, let me do it for them so that they won't start thinking God does not, God does fail. No, God doesn't fail. And, and, and they did that. And guess what? No, these children, they will come after several hours. Daddy, hasn't God answered yet? I said, don't worry, keep believing. He will answer. And now by the next day, I received some money. And when, when I received that money, I, I didn't even I know. I was just like, okay, Lord. Um, what's this money for? Because because I do that all the time, you know, in, and that's what you should do. Lord, what's this money for? And then the Lord began to give me instructions concerning the money. I said, "Okay, sir." And then He now said, "Remember, your children asked me for pizza." I said, "Oh yes, Lord." I said, "I'll give it. I've brought this." Over. I said, "Oh, 
praise God. So I called him. I'm like, hey, you guys asked God for pizza yesterday, right? He said, yes. He has answered. Woo! Praise God. They, they were so excited. Of course, we, we got them. They have pizza. And, you know, I asked, okay, what exactly do you want? What flavor? What, what, what do you want? And they told everything they wanted. We got it for them as they wanted it. And they enjoyed it. Now, now you see, that, that time you see them enjoying it. What's going on? Their joy was full. And, and I can just imagine God looking at them and nodding his head and saying, whoo, glory. You see, now, I, 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 could, I could have decided to be that kind of parent. I said, will you shut up? What, what, what are you asking for pizza for? Do you, do you think it's healthy? You, you understand? I could have been that parent. But I said, no. Let me leave them to ask their father. If their father provides it, fine and good. If their father doesn't provide it, woohoo, praise God. And he did provide for it. Thank you, Holy Spirit. Now, if he would do that for them, now think about it. He can do that for anyone who recognizes him as God and Father. Praise God. He can do that for you. You don't need anyone to tell you, go and pray. You can pray. You're hearing me say this now. I shared that story with you for this purpose. To make you know that, hey, if those children can ask for peace and God answer, I can ask for, you know, what, what, what do you want? Oh, I've been checking. Oh, my car's been giving me issues. I can ask for a new car. Please, go ahead. Feel free. Ask. What's Jesus looking at? He's looking at you when you drive that good car or that new car. He sees you like, ha, ah, oh. You know, imagine you're driving that jalopy and boom, you know, like, yeah, boom, you know. And then you, you drive and you pray, Father, this car should not stop. No AC in the car, you're sweating. You're driving, you take the, the, the handkerchief and squeeze it. And then you'll be going and, 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 and then suddenly you ask and then he gives you a good car, a, a new car. The AC is working, everything is fine, and you're just driving, and the, the windows are up, the AC is blowing, and you're just driving, and there's just this cool atmosphere, calmness, you know, and you're just driving, and you're like, wow, life is good. And God's looking at you, and He sees how happy you are. And He just says, life is good. He says, yeah, yeah. He loves for your joy. To be full. Whoever told you that there's anything too much for God for you? Whoever told you that that thing that you desire is too carnal that God cannot give you? Listen, if it's going to make your joy to be full, go ahead and ask. Go ahead and ask. If it's going to make you happy, go ahead and ask. Now someone says, hey, what if what will make me happy is not the kind of things that God will give? Let me tell you this truth. It will be a hard truth for some of you. But I'm going to tell you this. If you will form the discipline of asking the Lord whatever you desire. And number two, have the patience to wait for him to give it to you. I'm telling you, to, I'm not even scared of whatever will come into your mind to ask. Because I know something, by the time he is done with you, you will receive the good thing that is fitting for you. And you'll be glad. See? So, someone say, okay. Jesus also asked, and our job before, right? He said, yeah. Okay. Um... I want to ask God for two wives. I want to ask God for two wives. I don't have a problem with you asking God for two wives. Go ahead and ask him. Hmm? Will he give me? I'm telling you the truth. By the time he is done with you, you he is going to give you that perfect wife that one day you will, you will just sit there and say, man, this is more than two wives for me, praise God. I'm telling you the truth. One day you will know. You will know. Because you see, understand this, and, and, and I'm telling you the truth. There is something in your heart that made you to think that marrying two wives will satisfy you. 
It might not. You, it, you may be wrong. But there is something you're not wrong about. You're not wrong about that void that is seeking fulfillment. And you understand what I'm saying? So when you bring it before the Lord, number one, and number two, be patient for him to give you. That's the important part. By the time he is done with you, he will actually answer you properly. I'm telling you the truth. He will, he, 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 ah, if I ask God for that, he just hits my head. I'm like, are you mad? Are you crazy? There is something in you that is yearning out, that is crying out, that your mind thinks. You know, someone say, hey, God, if you can just, can just get one billion naira now. How? Wow. I mean, I, I will be so satisfied. I, I will be so full of joy. All right. Go ahead and ask him. And, but, but isn't that silly? Go ahead and ask him. <laughs> I, I'm telling you, go on your knees and ask him. If it can come out of your mouth, I bet you God will answer you. <laughs> you think God's going to give me one billion? Listen, 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 listen. He will give you what will satisfy you. And, and, and the, here's the point. Don't, don't say, eh, eh, Pastor George, please just talk straight. No, no, no. Understand what I'm saying? There is something in your heart that you're looking for. And I made you feel one billion will do it. Now, here's what God answers to. He doesn't answer to what we speak. He answers to what we say. Jesus said, you shall have whatsoever you say. Now, when you go to God in prayer, you say more than you speak. That's the truth. Because this is how it works. You say with your heart. You speak with your mouth. Yeah. So that's why it's important even when when you read the scriptures, it is important that you understand what it is saying. Because sometimes people speak and what they are speaking is completely different from what they are saying. I'll give you a perfect example. Someone walks up to you, you know, this, this faith and positive confession, you know, movement. So someone walks up to you and said, hey brother, eh, please, can you help me with a thousand bucks there now because I'm very rich. Now, an ignorant person will be looking at you and say, I don't get what you're saying. You see? He spoke and his speech said, give me a thousand bucks because I am very rich. Now, his speech is confusing. But what is that you are looking for? You are looking for what he is saying. So now, you, you're seeing two things. Give me a thousand bucks. You can only ask for a thousand bucks if you are in need. If you are poor. You know what I mean? Even if it's for one, one moment. See? And then, you are now saying, or you are now speaking also that because I am very rich. Now you're confusing. So what exactly are you saying? And then you know how it goes, like, um, <laughs> what nonsense? What, I, what, what, what was that nonsense you're doing? I said, hey, you know, now, I'm, see, I'm, I'm very rich. I said, if you are rich, why don't you spend your money? And then the guy goes, hey, understand what I am saying now. See, now you're communicating something different from what you are speaking. So what now, even you as a person, you want what you are saying to be heard beyond what you are speaking. Sometimes we go for a meeting and someone is speaking, someone is giving a speech and he says many words and then he's done. And then everybody's wondering, okay, okay. And then someone comes up and says, hey, what he is trying to say. See that? What he is trying to say is. And then the person starts breaking it down or give it a focus. See that? Because, because, you want to understand what the person is saying, not what the person is speaking. Through our speech, we try to convey what we are saying, but most times 
is not also accurate. So that's why you need the Spirit of God. And, and that is what God has. So when God listens to you, hear me. When God listens to you, He doesn't just listen to your speech. He listens to what your heart is saying. That's why I said to you, go to God without any fear. Say what you want to say or speak what you want to speak before Him. He will hear your heart and He will answer you according to what you are saying. So you may just think, if I get a new job, I'll, my joy will be full. And God hears what you're saying. And God sees that there is something you're not settled about. And he works on that thing. But you see, the place of you going to him is so important because he wants to hear from you. Our time is up. <laughs> Praise God. Now, I know I deviated a bit from what we said, but I, someone just needed to be blessed and instructed in this line. Praise God. I'll see you tomorrow. Praise God. God bless you. Bye.